Good morning, Bitcoins, and welcome to Mad Bitcoins, a brief history of money in the United States. Let me issue and control a nation's money, and I care not who writes the laws. Mayor Amschel Rothschild. After the Revolutionary War began in 1775, the Continental Congress began issuing its own paper currency, known as the Continental Currency or just the Continental. Denominated in dollars ranging from one-sixth of a dollar to eighty dollars, with many odd denominations in between, the currency depreciated badly during the war due to overprinting and a lack of coordination between Congress and the states, leading to the famous phrase, not worth a Continental. The Continental was also plagued by counterfeiting by the British, who attempted and succeeded in devaluing the currency during the war. By 1778, the Continental had lost 80% of its value. By 1780, it had lost 97%, and the bills had stopped circulating. The failure of the Continental led to the creation of the Bank of North America in 1782. The bank deposited large quantities of gold and silver obtained through loans from the Netherlands and France, and then issued paper currency backed by those deposits. By 1787, the bank was rechartered as the Bank of Pennsylvania, and stripped of its central banking functions. The failure of the Continental also led the Constitutional Convention to include the Gold and Silver Clause into the United States Constitution, barring individual states from issuing bills of credit or making anything but gold and silver coin a tender in payment of debts. This restriction also extended to the federal government, leaving Congress with only the power to borrow money on credit, which they would soon exercise. Alexander Hamilton, the first Secretary of the Treasury, had a three-part plan. He believed a central bank, a federal mint, and excise taxes were needed to help stabilize and improve the nation's credit. Proposed during the first session of Congress in 1790, the bank faced widespread opposition from the Secretary of State Thomas Jefferson and James Madison. They believed that the establishment of a central bank was dangerous to the sound monetary system and was mostly to the benefit of business interests in the commercial north, not the agrarian south. Jefferson famously said in opposition, If the American people ever allow private banks to control the issue of their currency, the banks and the corporations that will grow up around them will deprive the people of all property until their children wake up homeless on the continent their fathers conquered. Despite his opposition, on February 25, 1791, President George Washington signed the bank bill into law. However, a mere four years later, after Alexander Hamilton had left office, the new Secretary of the Treasury, Oliver Wolcott, informed Congress that more money was needed, and they could get it by raising taxes or selling the government shares of stock in the bank. The government chose the latter, and despite Hamilton's opposition, the stock was sold, and the bank's charter was allowed to expire in 1811. This has been Mad Bitcoins, a brief history of money in the United States, revolutionary money, and the first bank of the United States. Mad Bitcoins will return in the second bank of the United States, or when Andrew Jackson kills something, it dies. Until next time, be sure to subscribe, donate, and comment. Bye-bye.